Welcome to What's My Scene, Star Scene. Today we have Paul Lee, otherwise known as Draft, talking about his new album, Shadows and Shinings. Hi. Hey, how are you? Good. How's your morning coffee? It's actually really, this is my second one. I needed two this morning. Yeah, I've had a couple too. <laughs> Where are you based? Melbourne. Oh, I'm in oh. lockdown. <laughs> oh, no, again, you guys have just had it so tough over the last year and a half. Yeah. We are pretty much unscathed here. It's crazy. Yeah. I hope it moves really quickly through the lockdown for you guys and for Sydney far out. What a, what a mess. Yeah. It's really stuffed up your um, touring plans too. It has, yeah. But, again, there's so much silver lining for us being in WA and just having the opportunity to be able to like tour the state and yeah. So we, we cannot complain at all. I haven't interviewed you before, but I really did want to start with what influenced you when you were growing up. Yeah, for, for me, I came up in a musical household with my dad being a jazz drummer and percussionist and having his own label and just having uh, swarms of jazz musos come through my house when I was a kid and sleep on the couch and whatnot. And my dad had a vast collection of records from, you know, old Beatles stuff to Grandmaster Flash to even like the first Eminem record my dad had. Yeah. So there was a lot of eclectic stuff, but there was a lot of um, contemporary stuff in there as well, which I think like unknowingly really influenced me like from, at, from an early age as a as a kid and just like having that music driven into my psyche and it was just yeah a massive help but at you know I, I went through my rebellious stage like any other kid and just didn't want to do anything that my dad was doing in terms of like genre specific influence like I went to high school with a, a guy from a local group downside and um and then you know it was my sisters who put me on to like Snoop Dogg doggy style um they put me onto Nirvana like really big like albums that then sort of followed on to be really big influences of of my musically too so yeah. um the list of influences is just never ending though being a quiet kid myself the angst behind a lot of those records and like like really understanding um I don't know that like this is a avenue for self-expression first and foremost and that's why I gravitated to writing my own music off the back of listening to artists like Nirvana and um you know there's a, there was a lot of UK hip-hop that I was listening to at that time that I was like yeah I want to express myself in a similar fashion. That must have been hard being someone who was shy what's it like for you to do interviews now? Um I've, I've sort of been releasing music for the last 20 years. So yeah. if you asked me as a, you know, 19, 20 year old, yeah, I used to shit myself back then, completely shit myself, make myself sick thinking like, you know, my first Triple J interview, there's going to be millions of people hearing this. It's live on the radio. What if I say something wrong? <laughs> and it's, it was just like my inner dialogue basically trying to self-sabotage me yeah. but you just you know you just get better and better as the time sort of goes on and uh yeah I don't know it, you, you just tend to get out of your own head and out of your own way well you did really well on Triple J definitely have they picked up this new one um we're sort of pushing um new songs to them at the moment so fingers crossed like a I think off, off the back of the last 15 years and them smashing my music like in the past and, and where I'm at today, I'm just extremely grateful for the, for the, for the past, you know, and, and moving forward in terms of like streaming platforms and having a real engaged fan base either way, you know, it's, uh, I'm in a really good position. Yeah, I love the new album. It's amazing. It, Thank you. It, 
it's really cohesive, but then again, all the tracks really stand alone. So I was hoping I might go through a little bit of a track by track, if that's okay. For sure, let's do it. <laughs> Well, you start with your message. It starts with an introspective message, first and foremost. And the album title, Shadows and Shinings, was just, a, you know, I, I think is a massive reflection of that. Both my lightest times with my daughter and my darkest times, um, you know, going through a breakup and and uh, having, having to deal with uh, personal issues and whatnot. So... Um, but it also just trying to normalize the fact that like regardless of um, what, what what you think like an artist is we're just all normal people and we're all like going through similar issues that you know the listeners going through too so I think that first and foremost was my what, what I wanted to get across with this album so it was a great way to start it definitely your second song how did this song come about and how difficult was it to write it it wasn't difficult at all like any of my songs first and foremost has just been part of the like therapy process and getting it off my chest and putting it out into the ether and um, releasing it you know so if anything um it, it's just so incredibly helpful and um it's it's always been a part of the creative process being vulnerable and honest and then you know however people perceive it is up to them so yeah it was it was it was easy I love that song and um okay. yeah like a lot of people are like oh it's very cat empire inspired and I'm like no, I can't. No, I don't know either. I'm like, I, you know, I've, I've I've heard like little bits of Cat Empire on the radio, but I couldn't. I, you know, that it was definitely not influenced by them by any means. No, yeah. I love the film clip. It's amazing. It's really good. How much fun was that? That like I'm working on, um, you know, the whole records. Uh, well, now I'm on my fourth film clip that I just shot yesterday wow. um, with two really close friends of mine in Perth and it is just an absolute blast we're having so much fun in the process and and it's the first time in a long time I've just felt so comfortable shooting these clips as well because I don't know if if many people know but I've I, I have struggled with big health issues from you know my my early teens until now where I'm 38 and I have never really felt comfortable being in front of the camera until now as well. And it's like, far out, that's 20 years making film clips and only now being comfortable. So it's, um, it's, been, it's been amazing, yeah. And I love working with these guys. They're local guys, Complete, and another friend of mine, Uncle Sam, and they're just absolutely smashing it. Drop shop, drop shop, shop media. Yeah. 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 We, we just finished a video for Hypocrite yesterday and it's another oh. fun one. Yeah, yeah, it's, a, it's another fun one. I, I Like looking back, I think, are these songs too dark? You know, like because a, a lot of my stuff, again, goes back to the therapy and, and, and the release both musically and internally for me. Um, but then, like, I think, far out. I hope, I hope the subject matter isn't too dark on this record. No, it's not. And A Hypocrite is probably one of my favourites on the record. Um, so track three, Oliver Twist featuring Pressure. Oh, hot damn. So good. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much. Um, yeah. I that one. Now, this is something I wanted to ask you. With these, with your friends, you know, you have they're featured on your album. What comes first? Do you have the idea? Do they? Do you work on it together, or does it? Do you have this uh, all set out and then go to them and say, "Can you feature on this?" In this case, it's it, it, it constantly changes throughout the process, especially now with the internet and been able to just send people songs and ideas. Um, and, and work online it's just a different world now so in this case yeah I, I had the whole song and a, and, a, and a verse sort of missing and I sort of showed P it and uh, pressure and yeah he he just jumped on it so 
Yeah, I'm extremely grateful to have pressure on it. We've been collaborating for the last 15 years. Yeah. He was my first big uh, collab when I was just a young kid. And I don't know, he's just always had belief in me, which I've always really appreciated, you know, having someone of that scale still um, behind me and um, just wanting to to write music together is, uh, yeah, it's amazing. It's fantastic. Let me go into Model Plane. That's, that song, I don't know, I, I kind of felt like that was more a bit lighter and, and you know, the humorous side of a re relationship falling apart. Oh, definitely, definitely. But that, that chorus had been floating around for the last 10 years after my album, The Life of Riley. It was one of the ideas that didn't quite stick at that particular moment. Mm. And then I tried to find a home for it over, over the last, you know, eight years and my other releases and it just never stuck. And it's only till now that it's found a home and collaborated with people, uh, three really good friends of mine from LA and, um, and yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really happy with that one. I love, that's one of my favorites on the record. Oh, Postcards was just beautiful about your daughter. Yeah. 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 That, that's probably my favorite song on the record. Um, there's just something magical about how that one came together. I, I actually wrote that one and had my daughter's mum involved in it as well. Wow. Um, so she's a, a, an amazing singer-songwriter herself and she was uh, the backing vocalist on Shadows on My Walls as well. Um, but, yeah, I, I love that song and, and, and just how it came about and the arrangement and how it feels and... Yeah, it's a real important one for the record, that one. It's by no means anything close to a hip-hop song. I hope uh, my hip-hop fan base still still really connect and enjoy it too. Speak easy. This I found quite uplifting. Please don't tell me it was a dark one because then I've listened to it. <laughs> <laughs> this, this was definitely an uplifting one. Yeah, this this features Jess One from the Fundamentals, yeah. who is just a stand up human being and one of my favorite people in the scene. So it was a no brainer having Jess on the album, and um, and yeah, this song was a bit of a process because it's it it had glimmers of being too poppy in in certain parts, like through throughout the process, and um, and we had to sort of strip it back and then have my friend Brendan play horns on it which uh just seemed to be the icing on the cake but i i'm really happy with this song as well i look you know i'm gonna say that about all the songs though <laughs> I, I i'm really proud of, of this body of work and you should be and, definitely oh thanks yeah but it's it's like from my perspective i'll finish an album but I, but then i won't really listen to it after that that point because it's just driven me crazy over the last year and a half but this one, for some reason, I, I just want to continuously go back to it and 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 revisit the songs. And when I go for my night runs, I've I've got it on. And that probably sounds a little bit narcissistic, but I, but it's kind of like from a fan's point of view, like this is a music that I wanna I wanna listen to as well. And I think that's really important. And it's I haven't had an album like that for a very long time. Oh. Don't put your other albums down. This is your baby at the moment, but your other Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, oh, for sure. Like, I'm grateful for every record, even my first album. Like, yeah. there's a moment in time, and, I, and, I, and again, I really pride myself on the vulnerability and the honest side of my music. But in this particular time, this is the reflection of how I feel. So, so that's why I keep going back to it. Yeah, I love it. Holy Water. That was a song that I wrote in the States and I, I had like an Airbnb at that particular moment and there was a lady upstairs that just wouldn't sleep and I could basically just hear her walking around and I couldn't sleep because she was just like running a marathon upstairs. So I always thought oh, that, that would be a cool idea because I was, you know, going through some stuff at that particular moment and, um, yeah, just married the two, two together. Yeah. I wrote a lot of these songs in the States. I, 
I spent 2016 um, over on the west coast of, of, of America. I bought an RV and just travelled up and down the coast riding a lot of these songs. Yeah, yeah. It was, uh, yeah, amazing. It was incredible. I kind of wish that I was, I was back there now just with, yeah, you know, not a worry in the world, just an RV, my guitar, just writing songs and that's it. Yeah. But hopefully the world sorts itself out and we get to travel again. Hypocrite. We spoke a little bit about it earlier, but that, yeah, <laughs> I, I liked it. <laughs> I didn't think it was dark. Don't worry. (laughs) Great, great. And you have your minor interruption. Do you think that um, the listener is going to go through too much and need a bit of a break from all the intensity? I think that's. I think that's one of the most intense (laughs) songs on the album. That was like a little bit of a. You know, at that particular moment, I had bought a house in the hills of Perth. And um, and I had a puppy, and I had my daughter, and and everything just seemed to be crumbling down within that moment. So I thought, you know, to to capture how I felt within that time, I wanted to do an interlude because I wasn't going to write another song that was, um, yeah, just going to weigh a bit heavy on the listener. Uh, so so my daughter features on that song and. The puppy Sadie features on that song. And it was just like a little bit of a, a life crisis breakdown moment. Uh, with Problem Here, was that all that stuff about the house? Yeah, 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 yeah. So basically that was the same timeline. Yeah. So anything, any qualm, any like first world problem that you heard in Problem Here was <laughs> off the back of the minor interruption interlude. <laughs> Uh, better alone that's sad yeah that's it is a sad song I love I I I love that song though as well it's again like not genre specific it's it's the kind of music that I want to gravitate towards in the future and write more of and and um yeah again that's one of my favorite songs on the record but yeah of course it has sad a sad undertone to it but I kind of like sad music. Well, that's that's a lie because one of my biggest influences are, are the Beatles, and a lot of their stuff is up, uplifting and and um, and and feel good. But yeah, there, there definitely needs to be a balance of again the shadows and 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 the lightness on every record. Problem here, I love it. And uh, how much fun was that? to make a film clip and stuff. that was awesome that was so much fun again those those guys are some of my closest and then in comes oh shit <laughs> <laughs> it, had a, it has a very long intro that yeah. features one of my friends very, very drunk in a tour van that that was a show we played a festival um up north in wa and i brought a friend of mine along and he's part of the music industry as well. And he drank all of our tequila on the rider and was absolutely a mess. <laughs> um, so writing a song about uh, the adverse consequences to drinking too much, it had to start with that little sound snippet that I had. Yeah. <laughs> anytime I hear it, like from a personal perspective, anytime that I hear that song in the intro, it just makes me laugh even even now. So uh, it was a no-brainer. Yeah, and how did you come about recording that? Did you just suddenly think, oh, God, oh, shit, I've got to record this? <laughs> <laughs> We, um, this was another song that I wrote while I was in the States. Um, I collaborated with Eli Green Eyes on this one. He produced that song. Wow. And we just envisaged it being a live banger with the, with the crowd really sort of um, singing those chorus lyrics back to us. It's like, oh, shit. <laughs> um, we just saw it as more of a party anthem and, and something that a lot of people could relate to. Hollywood Hills, I, I love it. And the film clip is fantastic. Yeah. Now, that would have been fun. 
that was a whole heap of fun. And it's just so nice having so many um, Perth MCs involved in that clip as well. Mm -hmm. um, that, that was a heap of fun. It's, again, another song that's not really genre-specific. It's inspired by uh, the 60s era more than contemporary hip-hop. Um, but, yeah, that's, again, one of my favourite songs and another one that I wrote while I was in the States. That, that idea came about from a uh, July the 4th Independence Day party that I went to in Malibu and... Um, the party next door, they, 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 there was a strip of houses, beautiful houses, and um, they were privately rented for July the 4th. And the, the, the party next door was run by Leo DiCaprio. Oh. And um, it was a crazy time in my life. But, um, but that's what that song was inspired by. Oh, that's fantastic. Um, I like right. how you said it's not genre specific. I think it's more... For me as well, just being um, true to my influences and the inspiration, whether it came from, you know, my dad's influence with jazz music or, you know, my gravitation to Beatles stuff or hip hop. It's more not like pigeonholing myself into a category that's only hip hop specific and I can express myself freely over whichever genre I choose, because that's, you know, first and foremost, that's what it's about. Yeah, I've got two more songs to go through. <laughs> City, okay. love it. June Rats. Yeah, it was a no-brainer having the Junies on another record. Um, yeah, we released a song by the name of Mexico on Seven Mirrors mm -hmm. and went to Mexico, shot the video, drank margaritas every day. And they became like some of my closest friends within the industry. So when writing this record and this record being um, such a family affair, it was, yeah, again, a no-brainer to have them a part of it. And uh, I always love collaborating with those dudes. It's actually quite dark, that song. <laughs> I think the Junies chorus is like very chant worthy and uplifting, but it's got still very like dark undertones through the COVID era and being yeah. like trapped in you know, <laughs> borders and yeah, like uh, that's one of my favorites again, yeah. just because I get to give like Clive Palmer shit and um, feel like I ran the city for a day. Yeah, that's fantastic. And um, actually with Holiday Hills, I love the film clip and, the, and also the Trump lyrics. <laughs> yeah well I had to change that that lyric because oh. I wrote um and the host of The Apprentice he is your leader but yeah. by the time it was just about to be released yeah. he was no longer the leader and I was like oh I've got to change that line but it still but works because we all it's know still very good yeah. for sure. <laughs> because yeah he was so impactful through his time that it's going to be relevant for another 10 years I just because, hope that in another three years, it doesn't become the truth again. I know. That's scary, isn't it? It's either like him or Kanye West. I think they'll <laughs> both be running for power. Uh, excuse me, that's Ye. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's changed now. And lastly, Release Me. Release Me is a huge one for me because that features a friend of mine, Hunter, who's passed away. Wow. Um, Hunter... Uh, 20 years ago, Hunter gave me my first um, real opportunity in, 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 in the hip hop world and placed me on a record by the name of Dundee L. And it was like one of the first verses I ever wrote. And I had the confidence to show him one night and he's like, yeah, we got to put that on, on this song. And then he put me on another three songs on that record and my career just started to snowball from that point onwards. I released my first solo record off the back of it. And then my second album that then had a little bit of Triple J play and then Brothers Grimm, which had Jimmy Ricard and then so on and so forth. Mm. So I wanted to have Hunter a part of this album somewhat and, and the outro song as a bit of a bookend to that particular time as well in life. And um, the other two people that are on it, Layla and Daz, the, the three people are my, some of my oldest, closest friends within the Perth scene and um, it's a very very important song for me that one. 
I love how you all do support each other. For sure, for sure. Well, we came up, you know, in a time that there was only a handful of people with within each city doing what 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 we're doing now. Yeah. So, you know, it was it was a little family, you know, within Australia and the obese record era, you know, from myself and and the hoods and downside before radio play, you know, we were doing shows around the country just off the back of like the energy within the local scene. Um, the music that I listen to and the Australian based hip hop that I listen to is very authentic and, and people that are rhyming and singing about our day to day first and foremost. And yeah. I think, yeah, from, from our scenes perspective, that's been, yeah, a massive yeah. part of our identity. I think it's relatable, but I also think it translates internationally as well. Have you been getting a lot of airplay internationally? Not so much airplay that I know of anyway, um, but there I have like Jimmy Ricard is kind of just like the gift that keeps on giving. I, I get a lot of fans internationally, even to this day, hit me up like last week even and just say, oh, I've just found your music. Uh, you know, stumbled across it from the song Jimmy Ricard. Now I'm going through the back catalogue. And that song, again, was released 12 years ago and it's still giving me fans to this day. So, um, yeah, and especially in a time for American hip-hop where it's more electronical-based and not so much based around live in instrumentation. And and um, so a lot of the American fan base is gravitating towards the Australian hip hop more so than the American hip hop because they can they tend to relate to it more. There's less celebrity, I guess, around what we do as well because it's like on a different scale than America. So I think, you know, the normal American day to day person would relate more to our story than than the people at the the top of the game in America that you know have a different lifestyle now. Yeah, true. But then you killed off poor Jimmy. In the next album. <laughs> he deserved it. He deserved it. <laughs> it was more like that, like the killing off of Jimmy Ricard was more the killing off of people's expectations. Like after yeah. the, you know, Sorry, after. I was just joking. <laughs> nah, I get that quite a bit though. So why'd you kill Jimmy? Did you really no, hate him? I was I was just no, I, I, that song changed my life. And I'm like incredibly grateful for that song but it was more like off the back of having something so gigantic on radio it was more um yeah people saying oh how are you gonna back have you got another jimmy ricard how are you gonna back that up and it's like mm -hmm. well I've, I've never been that sort of artist that will just try recreate a formula as well it was just a moment in time that's how i wanted to express myself and you know whatever happens after that happens yep that's great. Um, so what is next for you? I'm so inspired at the moment. I just, I can't wait to release this album, play some shows, but I, I'm really looking forward to just getting back into the studio and writing again. And usually after something at this scale, I don't want to get into the studio for a good six months. But, you know, I'm, I'm happy just not to open that door. But this time around, I don't know, there's something, something's changed and, I'm really inspired just to get onto some new stuff already. So now I'll leave you with two uh, questions we usually ask our artists. Firstly, how would you describe your sound in food form? In food form? Wow, that's an amazing question. How would I describe my sound in food form? Um, I would say like a new take on an old classic, like like chicken lasagna with avocado. And last one, our magazine's called What's My Scene? So what is your scene? Um, my scene is through and through, yeah, very Perth hip hop, you know, and... And it's not genre specific, it's not sound specific, it's just, yeah, if you're a good person and um, want to be a part of pushing something forward, that's what my scene sort of revolves around. And I'm very, 
proud of the people that I've got around me and the people that I collaborate with. And I feel very, very fortunate. Thanks so much. And good luck with the album. It's fantastic. I love it. Yeah, thanks so much. Thanks for having me. Thanks, Paul.